When mm-hmm. I was 12, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And then you have, like, Cardcaptor Sakura, and they're out here saving the world. Like, let's be real. When you were 12, you didn't know your right from your left. <laughs> I still don't know my right from my left. Excuse <laughs> so me. I was just thinking that every time I had to think about my right, I literally had to think about, okay, which hand do I write with? And then I'm like, okay, that's mm-hmm. my right side. I just put out the L, and then be like, okay, that's my left hand. <laughs> oh, my God. I never thought about that. <gasps> How do you not? That's like the main way people check. I've never heard of that before. No, dude. Are you serious? (sighs) Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Jose Junkies, an anime podcast where we talk about anything and everything. I'm Iso. And I'm Kane. And welcome back to our podcast. Oh, my gosh. Can you believe it's already December? It's already the holiday season. Dude, it's so cold now. I mean. Okay, I know where the... (laughs) where we're in a very warm area but it's cold to me okay oh my gosh i had people coming from new york and they were like dang you guys have it really good here and i was like do we it's freezing we can't handle it they're like no it's already starting to snow we're dying over there like blizzard and i was like oh okay yeah i guess we do have it pretty good we out here like oh my god it rained once oh man but we need it for the drought <laughs> Oh my gosh. The drought was so bad though, so that makes I sense. I mean, I'm pretty sure we're still in a drought. It's just we're getting by The somehow. drought never ends. Yeah. <laughs> Perpetual state of drought. Y'all thirsty out the here. Thirst. <laughs> thirst is <laughs> real. The thirst is so real. It's so funny. Oh man. Are you doing anything for the holidays? Oh my gosh, I want to travel so bad. Especially since Japan is open, but tickets are so expensive during this time. Even though, honestly, it's so freaking cold. Like, I think December is not so bad, but January, February, it's freezing in Japan. Yeah, it's so cold. The only But for some reason, the ticket is so expensive. It's because it's the time of the year that kids have off from school. So, like, family mm-hmm. vacations and all that, or, like, even just their own vacations, especially for college, it's the only time they can go. So, tickets mm-hmm. are most expensive. It's, like, yeah. then in summer. And then... Um, Hanami season two gets pretty expensive. Yeah, I'll probably just do like road trips or something nearby, something fun like that. Because definitely want to travel. It's like this itch, you know. Yeah. Since the pandemic, it's just like I want to get out. I want to do stuff. Need to get out of the house. I mean, that sounds fun too. Like to be honest, I haven't really been anywhere domestically in the U.S. either. I think it's because mm. always when I look at like plane tickets, I always end up finding tickets for like international flights that are cheaper. Or like the same price as domestic, and I'm like, but why go domestic when I can go international? <laughs> exactly. That's why it's like, ah, why don't we just? Oh my gosh, I can't wait for the holidays. And oh my, and did you do any Black Friday shopping? <laughs> I did online. <laughs> yeah, I only do online now too. But it's crazy because I hear um there weren't even that many sales, and then they say that Black Friday, a lot of the sh- um workers just say that it's just like another day. Oh, I I saw that for like workers in stores. Like I saw like the news Mm -hmm. thing where it was like there was like no lines, no one there. Everyone was just all like, who wants to wait on the cold? Yeah, I went to the mall that day because I just forgot that it was Black Friday and I just picked up and I totally forgot. I was like, wait, it's kind of more busy. And then I was like, wait, this is Black Friday busy. It's like empty. I mean, I guess it's good. So no, no COVID or lower COVID risk. Mm-hmm. I thought it might That's be true. more crowded at like clothes shops though because people like to try things on That's true I feel like most people do online shopping though and fast fashion has gone so like intense that people can just you know afford to spend $15 and not fit something Ooh, and just give it away 15 is still a lot of money I it could buy is. a meal with that money yeah it is though and then food nowadays too i usually go to restaurant and be like oh i'm so full i have enough food to go home like normal stores that i go to yeah and now i can finish the entire meal because of shrinkflation oh my god it's so bad because i'm the type of person where i was like i can get like three meals out of like a restaurant meal and now i get maybe like Mm -hmm. two yeah that's what i mean it's crazy it's it's everything it's so frustrating they think you don't know. Like, I think that's the most frustrating part I've noticed about it was that they up these prices and give you less and then blame it on inflation when it's not even inflation anymore. It's just them being like, oh, nothing we can do. It's already this high. And then make it seem like the new norm. The worst. It's like, 
and then I feel times have changed dude I feel bad about eating out too because it's like the prices are so much and there's like so little workers and then having to tip more and more and I'm just like I don't Mm -hmm. have the money to eat out (laughs) it's really sad not that I even like eat I think like now I only will eat out if I eat outdoors and it's really cool to do that anyways Mm, I still eat out and I tip fat I'm a fat tipper but (laughs) it's just because I know how hard it is to be but I now nowadays even just buying grocery to cook at home is pretty pricey yeah and there's like the um supply shortages that have been going on too I know I don't think it went through I think they were doing something about like the the railway strikes I don't think it happened Mm. or it wasn't I'm not sure where it is yet I don't think it happened but I think it's still like being delivered deliberated that's that's so sad to think about like their working condition and how much they actually provide for our economy and everyone Dude. like our life our daily livelihood and they're not even treated like decent normal no it's so dumb they literally were just asking for sick days they get zero sick day, zero zero sick days that is just borderline and they were like can we slavery. get like a week we just at least a week and they were like no and then government being like you can't shut down because you're essential to our economy and that will like trash the whole economy. It's like, okay, well, they're that important. Why don't you just give them like a week of sick day? Like, is that really too much to ask for that much of an essential worker? Come on. I just hope things will change for the better. Um, There's so many things that have changed, but you know what I've realized as well? It's like, I feel like I've changed as well as a person because my tastes in things have changed a lot too when I was younger I really like sweets mm. like really really sugary sweet like I would get like at Starbucks a caramel frappuccino with extra extra caramel and extra extra Dude, that's me still <laughs> yeah. I feel but like you're outing me I'm, like, I'm getting a headache after all that sugar you know like it's oh, just, I'm not true. the same but it's the same where I feel like my tastes have changed a lot that's true that's true it's like so many things I mean some things for me I feel like haven't changed but like what like my taste in like anime (laughs) is it the same though would you say i think there's parts that's the same but there's like things i can't watch anymore or it's like Mm -hmm. i have fond memories of and i'd be like oh that was so good but if you ask me if i would watch it again now i'd be like no or i just like certain characters i can't stand like um Mm -hmm. like i I remember i mentioned like a previous uh, previous episode of ours where it's like i can't watch canon like i can't do it anymore uh yeah, yeah because yeah. of just the animation style but there's also just like some characters where i'm just like i i hate you so much like you were such a it makes me uncomfortable like what was it card captor sakura there was like the the sensei with who has oh a relationship God. with like <laughs> he's like 30 <laughs> and then the girl is like 12 and That's it, so creepy. And they like romanticize this as like the most the cutest thing. Like, look at them. They have the most pure love. And I'm like, bro, he's like three times her age. Like, in what world? Um, So creepy. So watching it when I was younger, I was like, oh, yeah, this is my dream. And now watching it as I'm older, I'm like, I feel so much disgust right now. I I have no words. Do you think it was them like trying to like... Are they like fetishizing an older man kind of thing? Or do you think it's just like grooming behavior of like, oh, look how mature this little girl is I at mean, the age of 12? I think it's like both, isn't it? Because they try to, I feel like I notice a lot in anime where they make kids seem, or they say they're younger, but they act much older. You know, like when mm-hmm. I was 12, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And then you have, like, Cardcaptor Sakura, and they're out here saving the world. Like, let's be real. When you were 12, you didn't know your right from your left. I still don't know my right from my left. Excuse don't say that. You. I was just thinking that. Every time I had to think about my right, I literally had to think about, okay, which hand do I write with? And then I'm like, okay, that's mm-hmm. my right side. I just put out the L, and then like, okay, that's my left hand. <laughs> Oh my god, I never thought about that! <gasps> How do you not? That's like the main way people check. I've never heard of that before. No, dude. Are you serious? Dude, okay, you know the the song um All Star? Mm-hmm. And they sing like with the shape of an L on her forehead. Mm-hmm. I think it was her forehead. 
on my my forehead. Yeah. Someone's forehead. There was a shape of an L. When I was yeah, dude. When I was younger, you know when you just sing things, especially when you're younger, and you didn't know what the lyrics were, so you just kind of sang whatever it sounded like. Mm-hmm. For the longest time, I thought it was saying the shape of an elf on her forehead. <laughs> <laughs> And when I told like like a little elf. Yeah, and I told my like cousins and they they say they're like an elf. Like how how do you even make an elf on your forehead? Like how why would you think that? How does that make any sense? And I'm like, I don't know. It just <laughs> Maybe if you wrinkle your eyebrow really hard, it forms like a little elf shaped creature. <laughs> this is like happy holidays, elf. <laughs> or like another funny one I think was like um Coming Clean by Hilary Duff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, not us getting lyrics wrong when we were, like, younger. Dude, what was it? Um, I think she said, like, let the rain fall down on my sanity, mm-hmm. I think it was. Mm-hmm. I used to think she was saying celery. And I was like, let the rain <laughs> fall down on my celery. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, it's, like, the same where I have this saying, or I hear the saying, it's just, like, every fiber of my being... And I say every fiber of my beans because <laughs> that's what they were saying. I mean, beans so I do know, have like, a lot of fiber, right? It's so many fiber of my beans. I mean, that makes sense. There is a lot of fiber in I'm beans. I'm like, okay, you're not completely off, okay? I could I could still see that making sense. With every right? fiber that's of what my I'm beans. Saying. It reminds me of that every one. fiber of my beans. The one old song, the like, beans, beans, they're good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you fart. The more you fart, the better <gasps> you feel. So please eat beans for every meal. Right? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That song was That's uh, true. a staple of my childhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But lots of things have changed. So um, beans are good for you. Rain does not come down on your celery. And you cannot make an elf on your forehead. I think. If you can, I would like to know how, because that would just justify my younger self of, yes, it was the shape of an elf on the forehead. True. Damn. Times have changed. Man, are there any other characters that you just thought were, like, really, like, you you think of them very differently now than you did before? Because, like, back then, I used to think, like, Tarada Sensei and, like, Rika were, like, oh, cute, but now I'm just disgust, right? Yeah. Um. Hmm. Well, back then, I think I talked about this before, where I really, really hated Euphemia from Code Heos. Mm. Um, the sister. Mm. Um, Pink haired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really hated her back then because she just like you know in the way of like Lucius' plan. But looking back, I'm like, no, yeah, she was right. They honestly could have tried diplomacy maybe it wouldn't wouldn't have worked out but at at least tried diplomacy before war and like declaring all of this stuff so i feel like that was kind of like the the fork in the road for lelouch of whether or not he was going to become you know actual lelouch zero lelouch zero yeah or he was just going to continue his life hiding in the shadow and kind of like you know doing more low key things i mean that i feel like that was the turning point because he just came up and be like this is happening I mean, like, when you're watching it, too, you kind of are, like, can't tell if he's plotting and going to betray her anyways, or he really feels mm-hmm. changed. Like, to this day, I still can't say, but I guess he always has a plan B, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's crazy. crazy. That's all the, the But tech. now I like her, because I'm like, she is just trying to do her best, and she does care for people, and she has a heart of gold. I don't know why I was brainwashed to hate her so much. Because it's but like I she, think she's very, very pure. Because realistically, she was thinking about like everyone's lives. Like she was trying to save lives. Mm-hmm. And when we're watching, especially when we're objectively watching it as like an action, you know, shonen mm-hmm. type anime, we're like, oh, we just want to see people fight. We want to see people fight because yeah. that's what's fun to yeah. watch. And like, yeah. what's going on? How are people going to betray each other? We don't want to see the peaceful because like that's boring. Yeah, but and boring then also is good. Just like, oh, she's just nice and kind, and and then that's not the reality of the world, you know. I was very, yeah. not very optimistic. I just like, no, that's not realistic. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's very idealistic. And as much as I wish that was the case and that was the world, it's just I'd rather watch something again. I think we talked about this before, where it's a little bit more realistic and relatable. Yeah, that reminds me of like um, what's his name Takumi from Nana, like. Uh-huh. I actually had like the opposite. I used to hate him with a passion when I was younger. Like, I hated him 
so much <laughs> like he was the biggest piece of shit i could not understand why anyone liked him and why they had this character on top of like i really could not stand guys with long hair when i was younger mm-hmm. like i think the only thing that changed long hair for me was actually Modal. like yeah yeah dang the hatred rooted from then yeah Whoa, i don't know if it's dude. from them but like that was one of the characters where i just i couldn't i i just i didn't like that kind of long hair on guys i, I didn't understand it i was not like attractive mm, i see i see but like when wow. i watched him just with every fiber of my bean Be- i hated <laughs> talking to me <laughs> why did you hate him so much i just thought he was like i guess when i was younger it was very like shallow view of just a guy who's playing around with a girl and then like leaves her uh, pregnant and like he's like a boy rock before yeah boy. yeah he's like a rock star and he just mm-hmm. does what he wants and then it's like he gets what he wants and he does whatever you know mm-hmm. and he doesn't really feel any remorse and he has like side chicks and whatever it's fine like he does what he wants but yeah fuck boy before the fuck boy right Oh my god. Tuck me walk till all those little Yeah. <laughs> all the other fuck boys can run. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about- <laughs> no, but it's so true. I feel like it highlights an area of like Japanese culture of like the band life. Mm. Like all band boys are always like, you know, like oh so artistic and like interesting and like, you know, different. So they always get the girls. And I they mean- tend to be a little bit more sensitive too. So yeah, they they just they're just like the formula that a lot of girls like and so they have because they have their options and picks with women they also treat them carelessly i mean it's not even just japanese like band life i'd say it's like everywhere especially like i know in america like there's especially recently it's been coming out more i've seen like the predatory grooming nature of like a lot of bands where it's like these older guys and bands would like prey on these really young girls who are like their fans and like have them do things and you know try to make relationships and basically groom them at a young age and a lot of them those girls especially are coming out now and being like um yeah i was groomed i was a victim of this like predatory behavior and like it was really common like i never knew when i was younger that this stuff happened and now i'm like Mm -hmm. my god i'm so glad i was not a victim but it's wild to know that this happened especially realizing how young that age was because i remember when i was like that age like your teens right Mm-hmm. And being like, I want to go to a show. Like, I can be safe. I I know what to do. And then seeing this and realizing how young thirteen really is, and I'm like, my God, that could have mm-hmm. been me. Yeah, it's so young, and they're so like, oh, it's someone they admire, you know, and they look up to. So they would never think that person is like trying to hurt them or yeah. anything. It's like this admiration. But back to the Takumi point. Yeah, I hated him with a passion. Okay, granted, I watched Nana as a live action first. And then I mm-hmm. watched Same. the anime and then I read the manga. And progressively through each one, I came to like him more and more. Oh, interesting. But the thing is, I watched the live action when I was younger and that was it. I didn't do any of the other stuff. I didn't read or watch the anime slash manga when I was younger. But then when I got older, I rewatched the the movies, both of them. And then I um, watched the anime and read the manga. And that's when I realized I'm like, actually, he's like, the best character honestly <laughs> really Th- that's how much you changed your opinion of yeah him? he's like one of the best ca- i mean what? i like i like really like 3d characters you know that have like a lot of dimension to them I and see, to me I like see. honesty is really important and like because i can deal with people like you know like no one's perfect and people make mistakes but it's all about like doing mm-hmm. your best and owning up to your mistakes you know and trying to do better you know Mm -hmm. and i feel like he really embodies that because like as shitty as he's done stuff like for one the stuff has all been consensual like when you think about it Mm -hmm. and and hachi like slept with him of her own accord she liked him and she said yes to it and he he never forced himself on her he was like if you don't want this we're not gonna do it and then she was like no i want this you know Mm -hmm. and it's like naive especially back then too like when you're younger you don't really see how almost manipulative hachi is like you see Mm -hmm. her as like the dog character like Hachi right like she's cute Mm -hmm. but in the end she's an adult and she's making her own decision and she knows what she's doing like so it's naive Mm -hmm. to think that like she's naive to be honest 
I see, I see. Like, she's not holding her own, herself responsible. Yeah. As an adult in this situation, and yeah. things are being done to her, and she is the victim, and things yeah, like that. Yeah, like, especially when she gets pregnant, and then, um, what's his name? Uh, was it? It starts with an N. Um, the other guy who likes her. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I'll be with you. Like, you don't have to live like this. And then she even says, like, nah, I want this. It's like, she's making these decisions conscious- consciously, so... That's, like, another character I guess I could switch on. Like, I switch between, like, liking Hachi to, like, not that I don't like her, but, like, I see her as, like, she's not naive. She's an adult. Mm-hmm. And then talking to me, I, like, hate it. And now I'm, like, dude, he does so much. Even when she gets pregnant, he's, like, I'll take care of the kid. Like, I'll be there. I'll, I'll marry you. Like, I'll get the house. I'll pay for everything. Like, I can't say that. Like, I guess he, he never says that he'll necessarily, like, love her or, like, love her alone, you know? he's very clear like this is my personality i'm like i am a fuck boy in the end you know but i'm yeah. gonna do these things and i think i feel like after they got married maybe i'm no no he still slept with people afterwards but i think he was still honest about it i forget it's been a Fucking while whore. but even if he did like she was aware that he's doing it and she still stayed with him you know she was never like i hate oh him for this God. so it goes back to like the consensuality you know Mm-hmm. it's been a while since i've like watched this reread so my details may be a little hazy but generally so now i gotta like re-watch it because i don't remember anything i feel like i stopped way too early and i kind of only like watched the movie i mean it's like in an, parts of the anime it's on indefinite it's hiatus but <laughs> oh wow a day. lot more happened than i remember okay well now i definitely gotta go read it yeah there's definitely more that happens in the manga than just the movies but like i wonder if i'm gonna be pissed too because i feel like i didn't like him when i was younger but i don't know if i'll no. <laughs> still be mad now <laughs> he was such a piece of shit when i was younger but i think it's just like coming from a place of understanding you know and seeing more relationships at my age and like how people mm. are and like it's a big thing i mean i hate to say it's like bare minimum but like guys just taking responsibility for their actions you know the bar is in hell <laughs> but it's true but like that's what i'm saying the bar's so low i went from like hating him because it seemed like he was just like fucking around and being like he took responsibility like i can't hate on him for that mm-hmm. like he's doing what he can he's he's trying to be like i don't want to say the better person but like he's trying to be a person i see i guess with age we're a little bit more understanding and not everything is so black and white yeah maybe. yeah definitely so i'm not saying he's like a great person you know that's definitely not it like have to, people have their own flaws he definitely is flawed but like my opinion of him definitely changed from like being like this is the worst piece of shit ever to being like i can respect that i see it's good i think this is why anime is good because there are scenarios that if you could relate to real life it's like good that you can learn these kind of lessons too along with the characters you know like some people might be able to relate to him be like well that was kind of really shitty to do so maybe i shouldn't do that yeah no it's my hope (laughs) that people are reflective and you know self-aware i mean i think it comes to being like for your own situations too i mean i guess a lot of people watch anime as like an escape right like escapism Mm, yeah to not recognize like not deal with your own problems but i find it more like a mirror or i like using it as a mirror i guess to Mm -hmm. see points of view i otherwise would not clearly have seen otherwise because it's so easy to see things when you're like a third point objective viewer but when you're subjective to the situation it's a lot harder to like understand and process what's going on you know and make decisions True. And it's like any media, you know, you're just going to like be able to empathize with the character and be able to like, you know, really understand like the whole story and like people have different lives and kind of being able to see it from their point of view. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Let me think. What character do I? I feel like for me, it was like the opposite. I feel like when I was younger, I thought Sasuke was really hot and cool (laughs) and all this shit. And now I think he's a piece of shit and i still think he's a piece of shit (laughs) i think i can agree with you there because i mean like he's like the idea like you know like i think what takumi kind of is too you know that cool guy that all the girls are into and like you know everybody wants him but just a rotten nature and like i think he was like redeemable in like 
Naruto, but in Shippuden, he just keeps going downhill. He's like spirals for me. And then I just like, you're so flawed. It pisses me off. It's like and not it's like even flawed. The, not it's the like acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. It's like he's living like he's like a kid and never matured. And just like, I'm out here and I'm going to kill everyone to get revenge. Yeah. And it's like, even after your brother and all this, like, man... Take some time no, to reflect. No, not you going to try to kill the village that your brother sacrificed everything. Everything. Literally everyone to protect, you know? I'm just, like, so done. And, like, ignoring... Like, if you can't see that, yeah. <laughs> ignoring everyone who's trying to be there for you and be like, no, nah, no, nah, you don't understand. Global. Hashtag emo boy. Yeah. Hashtag, this is the dangers of emo boys, kids. Do not go for the emo boy. No <laughs> one understands me. One. This is the opposite of RAR. This is, I do not oh love God. you, not RAR. It's more like they don't even understand themselves most of the time. Yeah, I could see that. You know, to be honest, it, it sucks because I don't know if you watch Boruto, but I would say he gets even worse in Boruto. But <gasps> not in the same no way. way. He's just like, they try to make him out to be like, oh, he's a dad who he loves his daughter. But the thing is, he's still a shitty dad. You like mean the he, bare minimum. Yeah, like the bare minimum. He's never there. He, like, the first time, like, Sarada tries to go and meet him, she, like, barely knows him. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, the whole land is basically in peace. Like, come on. I know he's on his undercover mission or whatever, but he really couldn't be there more than, like... I thought he was on his redemption arc. They make it, they make it his redemption. They're like, oh, now he works, like, as, a, like, secret ops for, like, Naruto, like, the Hokage basically now, right? So he's mm-hmm. never home. Like, Sarada grows up. Sarada grows up to, like, she's, like, what, 13 or something? Mm-hmm. And she's like, I I don't really know my dad at all. Don't really see him. Has, like, this one picture. And then, like, I don't know. It's just ridiculous to me in the time and age. It reminds me of, like, was it Shippuden when it ended? And then, like, he can't even see, was it Sakura? And he, like, leaves the note like with a crow and I'm like you are like six feet away just go up and I think it was at um was it Hinata and Naruto's wedding I think it was like you couldn't even just go mm-hmm. to the wedding man you had to stay like six feet away like off a cliff and just watch from away creepily come on hashtag COVID before COVID <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> but everyone else was there I'm just it's so frustrating That's, I know and everyone is like all paired up like Ino was with like Sai and like Tamari's with Shikamaru everyone's yeah. like paired up and then Sakura and, like, it just doesn't do her any justice. I feel like Sakura already has, like, tons of hate because of her poor writing. And, like, as just a character in general. But, like, even then, like, she continues to suffer. I feel like Loki, the author, just hates his wife and he's just punishing her through <laughs> Sakura. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I, that's like my theory. Why would you write a character that's just like your wife and, like, write it so badly where everyone hates that character? Man, I mean, she kind of got a redemption arc when she learned healing and stuff, but... No, I, I don't hate her. I like Sakura a lot. Like, maybe just because, like, like I know she was annoying in, like, Naruto, but, like, in Shippuden, she redeemed herself. Except for the whole, like, confessing to Naruto thing. That was stupid. Dumb girl. Come on, girl. Get it together. <laughs> but overall, I think, like, she has gotten stronger. It's just, I think they were trying to, like, you know, put her as, like, the honorary female member where it was really just supposed to be BL. <laughs> we all knew that because first kiss, honestly, man. We knew, okay, it was always, always just Naruto and Sasuke. Can we play that? Can we play there. that? Utani Hikaru, like, you are always going to be the one. I'm going to be my... <laughs> the one. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know. I hated Sasuke. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand him. I still think I have this deep hatred for him every time I think about him. But it's only just because I love Itachi and I think Naruto is a good boy. So, I mean, you're not I think wrong. it's unfair of him. Eh. I mean, it's like it was okay in the beginning when they're younger, but it was the fact that he didn't really seem to mature that was bothersome. Yeah. Like there or was like, no development as a character. Yeah. That's why, like, even though I don't really like Black Clover, I like that, the you know, their Sasuke character is at least, like, acknowledging 
you know us as power and whatever well they're like because i thought it was going to be the same i know that's what i mean it's like i thought it was going to be that dynamic of the emo edgy boy you know but Mm. talented versus like the crazy one who's Mm. just like running around but surprisingly you know they're like that's what it should be you know friendly rivalry rather than just or i'm gonna kill you and everything you love (laughs) <laughs> it's just like it gets so boring Drama? the revenge the revenge like Drama trope much? just gets so boring after like oh my god it's you know so annoying it's like we get it you want revenge and mm-hmm. and yeah i think there's just some characters to me there's not enough to redeem them like some characters just for me it's black <laughs> it's like oh you crossed that line i don't like you anymore um, let me think. Okay, sad. Like, the Witch of the Ways. Huh? Oh, oh, go on, go on. Yeah, the Witch of the Ways, like, the melted gross lady from Howl's Moving Castle. Mm. I thought she was, like, gross and, like, you know, obviously the villain in the beginning and everything. But when she, like, shrunk down to, like, small little old lady, I thought, like, that was going to be her redemption arc, you know? But mm. then, in the end, she was selfish to the end. And that was me, like, no, mm-mm. <laughs> not today you are the problem lady i did not like her and i don't think i will like her (laughs) ever ever you know what's another character that i was like when i was younger you were like man this this person's so great but now i'm just like "Mm, i don't know man like in um goku from dragon ball (laughs) oh my god (laughs) okay go on Dude, okay, no, because when you're younger, you're just, like, all about the fighting, right? So you're like, damn, Goku's mm-hmm. so cool. He trains. He keeps winning, keeps powering up, Eats you know? a lot. Mm-hmm. And then he's, like, the, the go-free character that he, like, gets mad when he's got it, but, like, it's otherwise pretty happy, go lucky, you know? He has a son, mm-hmm. and he has a family, and everyone's just like, woo, they get along. But I'm like, do you not see Chi-Chi holding this family together? Like, this bitch, this bitch just goes and fucking dies all the damn time. And gets revived by these Dragon Balls and has a son and is just like, yeah, I'm off to go train and I'm going to go fight and I'm going to leave my family here to do the shit and Chi Chi will take care of it. Like, where's dad? Literally, where's dad? Like, the dad who went out for milk and never came back. Literally. (laughs) He went out to fight it and never came Came back. Until he gets revived by the Dragon Balls, which all his friends have to gather across the fucking universe at this point to revive him. Like, God knows how many times. It... Is it even God? Like, who who is the creator of this universe at this part? It goes so so high up. Oh my God, it's like, and then there's no acknowledgement of how hard it is, you know, to have to like take care of an entire family while they just go off yeah. and play. No, because then everyone like treats Chi Chi like oh the mad wife who's just like always on his ass, mm-hmm. and I'm like, she has the right to be like this. Do you not see what he's doing and what she has to deal with? <laughs> It's a partnership. It's not a freaking, you know, you're not just taking care of another child. But she is. Along with your own children. She literally is. He's literally another child. Yeah. So I'm like, just have to say that that reminded me when I was younger. I'm like, was all for Goku. But then I got older and I was like, I don't know, man, Goku, you're kind of a shitter. Mm, you kind of married reminds- married this woman who's left her, left her out to dry. You just come to bang her. Oh my god, that's so triggering. You bang her and then she just has to give birth and take care of the kids. Well, you're go off. Oh my god, that's triggering. <laughs> and it's funny because like everyone gets on Vegeta, like, look how mean he is. Like, look how like like how you know he was originally the evil character, but then he like mm-hmm. comes good, I guess you could say. And then he like marries Bulma and then they have um trunks. But then the thing mm-hmm. is like Vegeta is actually like kind of iconic like he always stands up for Bulma and like Bulma is like mm-hmm. strong independent woman have to say like takes over her, her her family company was it her family I think it was her family company but is like innovative is doing things on her own making making waves like she she's got it together and then like when people talk shit about her like he stands up for her love that as it should be yeah like you married her and you love her so this is what you should be doing bare minimum <laughs> the bar is in hell. But I have to say, I'm like, I feel like so many people don't even think about it because like DBZ is such like a shonen anime and just mm-hmm. I don't know. I remember when I was younger, I was in this one program and like 
they I remember we were like learning about like first date I think it was but they still had extra candy and then they were like okay I have like a super question like if you get this right you'll get the, the last lollipop or something and like I really wanted it I was like I got this and it wasn't gonna be like a first date question though it ended up being like an anime question about DBZ and I'm like raising my hand when they're like I forgot what the question was but I knew the answer and it was like me and all these dudes raising their hand and I was just like I got this I fucking know this and they chose me because I was the girl like they're like oh this girl isn't gonna know the answer I fucking knew the answer I was like I fucking watch <sighs> DBZ watch me bitch how dare you yeah bitch. that's so rude yeah I got that lollipop <laughs> it was delicious nothing is sweeter than candy and being right <laughs> At the expense of when they thought you were wrong. Yeah. That's so rude. Little bastards. Let me think what other characters. Oh my god. Now, since you mentioned like the DBZ thing, I've realized also like I saw this one TikTok of like um, I guess a wife was filming her husband and he was like making um, what is it? Jalapeno pop- poppers on TikTok. And essentially it was like they he was like complaining and he was like nagging he was just like you know i was i went to golf so and we're about to go watch a game right now i wish i had these ready when i got home like what were you doing all day and so he was just like complaining essentially he wanted to have it like the jalapeno poppers done when he gets home from golf and she was just and she he was just like you're just sitting around blah 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 and she while she was at going out she went to get her cancer treatment and then she was sitting to get her like cancer <sighs> treatment done. So he's just like, you're just lazing around while I'm out doing golf. And I was just like, the audacity, honestly, the audacity. Your face. <laughs> Excuse? <laughs> Excuse? Fuck that bitch, yeah. man. What the hell is going on, right? I was like, bro. I mean, not as so annoying. not as bad as that, but I saw another video where it was like talking about how like every family, like mom and dad, is on Thanksgiving, where it's like mm-hmm. the mom single handedly cooking and setting and doing like everything for Thanksgiving, oh, while the guy, sure. while the dad is like on the couch drinking a beer, watching TV, mm-hmm. and then being like, "Do you need any help?" and her being like, "No," and just like obviously being very stressed just with, I just need to set the table and cook the turkey and cut this and make the stuffing and this and then we'll all be good and he's oh like well God. tell me if you need any help and then her being like no it's fine and you know it's like obviously she needs help and he, but she's saying no because like it's all like mental capacity it's like if mm-hmm. you want to help just get up and help and then him getting mad be like well I asked if you wanted help and you said you didn't and it's just like and I was reading the, all the comments being like, man, I didn't know this was everyone else on Thanksgiving, too. Like, so many people agreed. And I'm like, my God, it's true. Yeah. Because I've had to cook Thanksgiving because I wanted to, like, because my family never does Thanksgiving as a tradition. Mm-hmm. So one year I decided to cook, like, entire meal. Like, I cooked turkey, like, eight oh different God. dishes and everything. Um, and I had some of my cousins help because I wanted to start the tradition for my cousins. You know, we've never had it. Mm. And so I wanted them to, like, enjoy Thanksgiving like everyone else instead of, like, you know, just our family doing whatever. And I remember being irritated because, like, I did everything. I cooked, like, I stayed up before, planned all the meals, set up everything. And literally all of, like, my uncles and my dad came to eat. And then they complained about the food. And then they went out. And to go by, like, because it was missing one food that they wanted. And I was, like, I had no time to make. Because literally there's, like, so many dishes. Like, there's fried chicken. There's, like, and they were just mad because there was no egg rolls. And I was, like, bro, egg rolls on Thanksgiving? (laughs) I mean, it's Asian, okay. but it's fine. But, like, the fact that they didn't appreciate everything and that you did. Come on. Like, are you, serious? you made, like, eight d- different dishes and they couldn't find one thing they wanted to eat. Like, come on. Yeah. And I still think about it because I was just, like, like at least for me and my all of my cousins, we were like, okay, well, it was a really good meal. But when I got up, all the food was gone. And I was just like, how is that possible? There was so much food. So they complain about it, but they'll still eat everything. And then I, I don't get to enjoy the fruit of my labor, you know? That's what's irritating sometimes, too. The sounds audacity. Like, that sounds like kind of like typical Asian family, though, you know, where it's like... Literally. They'll never say that they like it, but then it's like they'll eat it all or they'll they'll mm-hmm. do other things like... It's no, like, the worst is when they complain about it. Yeah. And then they eat it all. But I mean, it's like also... They shit on you. It's like even your parents, like when they shit on you and then they, they like brag to their friends about you, you know? 
Oh my god, it is so annoying. It's like the worst where they're like, "Oh, why didn't you get like good enough grades?" or like, "Why aren't you as good as this person?" But then when they go to their friends, they'll be like, "Oh, my child goes to such and such school, and like they do this and they try to one up other parents." It's like I hate it. Oh, annoying. <sighs> Anyways, let me think. Is there any other characters? Oh my god! Oh my god! I. Oh my god, how did I forget? This was a character like I had such an intense passion hatred for. I hated Kagome for Inuyasha <laughs> so much. Like, it was like during that time of like the Inuyasha, uh, what is it, Kagome versus Kikyo feud. Mm. And obviously I was on Kikyo's side, right? Like because Kikyo's I think stand. it's just my first like exposure to the series was like the episode where Kikyo was in and like you could just tell from that episode when she was resurrected there was more to her character like there was so much anger and it didn't make sense for her to have so much anger and resentment you know Hmm. so immediately I was like yeah she's probably pissed but there's probably something more than just her being a villain but I think I hated it because of it was more of the dub I realized Hmm. the voice was just annoying kind of like Asta Mm. Like at some point, I just couldn't get past it. Where it's just like, Inyasha, sit for you know, like, and then Please, no. it wasn't until like way, yeah, it was like until way later when I read the manga and I watched in Japanese that I was like, wait, Kagome isn't that really annoying of a character. I just really hated how she was portrayed in like the, I guess, the English dub. Mm. and anime mm. because she was portrayed more like a bitchy, whiny, like complainy character who just like won't be honest with her feelings and then you know and this whole annoying feud between the, them but then i realized like she's actually just really caring and she was just like a young girl you know throwing into this world mm. so it's not really like her fault like she is still just a young little high school girl who's holding like all of these responsibilities that shouldn't have been placed with her mm. and rather than being mad at inyasha we are all just like immediately pitting the two girls against each other you know <laughs> do you the think dog boy was the problem do you think that's like something like ingrained in us like from a young age where it's like we always blame like the woman and never the man for things mm-hmm. i think society is slowly changing where i find like the two girls who are being cheated on will band together to mm. ruin the guy mm. but yeah definitely that was before where the cultures immediately blame the girl even though the guy was the one who's cheating on both of them yeah i mean it kind of reminds me of not limited to but like the first thing that comes to mind it's like the whole like if someone gets pregnant it's like the girl's fault but never like the guys Mm. and it's like two people made this happen so why is it only one person's fault (laughs) and one person has to deal with taking care of the birth control and making sure they take it on time and all of this and all the side effects and the hormones it's just hell you know yeah and it's like and even as like a female i feel like i used to Play in the female and be like well you shouldn't have like gotten pregnant and then now i think mm-hmm. of it i'm like how are we ingrained this way like why is it's just wild because it's mm-hmm. like just because they're the one who has to like physically is stuck with a baby doesn't mean like they were the one who like there would be no baby if the other person didn't participate yeah and that's not even the worst part it's now that it's like not only are women stuck with like the birth control and getting pregnant it's like now we don't have the choice to not have a baby in some states you know and that's what's really scary it's like what the heck why is this a thing you know since we got pregnant like we should have the choice to have to carry rather than enforcing it on us you know i mean that's because having a baby is no joke that's like the whole thing of being pro-choice but it's like because it was never about the baby it was always about having power over women like it's so annoying because like no one's saying if you like want the baby and you don't believe the baby should be like not there anymore that you can't keep the baby like if that's your choice go with it but like it's for the people who who don't want that and even then if you want to keep the baby like then make sure there's more money to programs and stuff to help people raise kids oh my gosh kids are so expensive it's the same people who try to cut those programs or the same people who want them to have babies. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's just like, man, okay, I have to say, like, kids are so expensive. So, just think about how many diapers you have to buy. Like, dude, no, just the whole um, pregnancy and giving birth in the first place is expensive. Like, just getting delivery? Oh my gosh, it's like 16000 after insurance. No, dude, I remember watching a video of a dude who was, like, literally just trying to get the price of, like, how much it would cost to have his baby like planned baby right 
They were. Mm-hmm. I think they were going to have a C-section. They had the exact day. They knew the exact hospital they were going to go to. I think it was a C-section, but it was, it was like, this is the day. This is definitely the hospital. This is my insurance. Like, everything's set up. And they were just, they, like, called the hospital and, like, their insurance. And they were just trying to figure out, like, can we get, like, maybe even just, like, a ballpark of how much it's going to cost to have this kid? Like, we know exactly where and when and everything. Just, and this is probably, like, the most planned out surgical, you know, thing that everyone has. Like, everyone, like, many, many people have babies in hospitals. It's not like you don't know what's going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So like you must know how much people have paid, and like he there's so many tricks and you know things that they try to make you jump over. It's not All even like hoops, tricks; you know? they just essentially lie. They have a price list of every little thing that they charge for. Okay, and then you can always figure it out. It's just a matter of a little bit of work, and they make it harder because it sucks. Profit. Yeah, but then they go and they like he kept crying to. Call- crying he kept trying to call it and they'd be like um we won't know until you have it done what yeah that's basically what ended up happening he kept they kept giving him the runaround like um we don't know i'd have to figure out for my higher-ups and then they'd be like "Mm, we don't know We, we won't really know until we charge you and it's like so how about you just pretend to charge me see what the number is and then don't actually charge and just tell me the number like is that so hard no that's so dumb that doesn't make any sense and it's like not even for like oh we don't know what we're gonna have to do after we don't know what like there might be complications it's just like how much in the ballpark is it just to have a baby (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's so ridiculous jeez and like it and like you said like that one cost like 16,000 like I think it was like around 10,000 it's been a while since I watched the video but like it's a lot of money. It isn't like, oh, yeah, a couple hundred, maybe a thousand. It's like a couple thousand. Couple, like tens of thousands sometimes. Like in other countries, it's like it makes it so easy to give birth, you know? Some some countries give you money after you give birth. I think I like, saw I think one. in Japan, it's like, yeah. yeah like they yeah. give you like 2,000 a month or something. Yeah. I saw. I think I saw one for Japan where the dude... I think it was, maybe it was Korea, where they had, like, twins, and they ended up getting paid, like, not even wild kids, just, like, for giving the birth. They got, like, money back after. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's what we should have here, because, honestly, it is rough out here. Like, if you want people to have children, just have the program. People will have children. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, like, a lot of people are, like, we were so stuck working and having to do all this mm-hmm. stuff that it makes it hard to raise kids, you know? Like, you just don't have the time. Like <laughs> this is why I'll have pets. I am good. So like, I will have my pets as my cats as my children, and I'm I'm so freaking happy. Like I feel like they've improved my quality of life so much. I mean, you're not alone. That's what everyone's doing now because it's like the only plausible thing you can do, and it's like they also give you like unconditional love. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, I'm gonna call it love. They can be shitters, but you know, in the end. <laughs> That's love, it's right? Okay. It's okay. I don't expect unconditional love from them. I just, ex- like, I'm okay as long as they like me and, like, I don't get on their nerves and we can, like, you know, they, they like- coexist happily together. We you like don't get on their company. nerves? Excuse? <laughs> we annoy them as much as they shit on us. It's like, this is your, this is your pet tax. Like, you got to deal with the cuddles. Oh my gosh. If you want food, you have to give mommy cuddles. <laughs> this is exploitation! <laughs> hey, I'm not doing that. Anyways, I think we should wrap it up here. Um, let us know if there were any characters that you saw differently um, as you age or when you first started watching anime or maybe towards the end of the series. I feel like there's a lot of characters we hate throughout the whole thing. Like, what is it? The Tucker, the father from Full Moto Alchemist hate him i think that's collective just we all hate him. like yeah but like did not deserve to be a father oh my god don't get me started on that whole segment we can talk that, about that forever some people just don't deserve to be parents I mean, um but yeah let us know if there's any characters you've seen differently when you were when you first watched or you know if you change your mind about a character in the comment and we'll see you again next week thanks so much for watching i'm kane and i myself And bye. Bye. We'll see you again. Bye.